You've just completed the tutorial. You've been dropped off in the middle of nowhere. What do you do now? Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to look at some just extremely basic things about Star Trek Online, how to navigate uh, from one place to another, how to find your next mission or quest, um, some of the very basic 101. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you finish the tutorial, it drops you off out in the middle of space. Um, this will vary a little bit depending on what faction you started off with. The majority of people start with you know, a fed character, so that's what we're going to focus on, but the same things are going to apply to any of the other factions or kinds of characters that you pick where this might vary, at least in terms of location. Um, so if you're new to MMOs in general, which I was when I started playing this game, um, there's some just keywords that are slightly different. So in STO, uh, they call quests missions, and that's pretty much the, the main gist of that. Um, we'll get into some more of you know abilities and castables and, and those kinds of things uh, a little bit later in the video. Again, we're not going to go real deep in, we're just going to go over some of the very basic stuff. So you finish the tutorial, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and you need to know what to do, where to go. And so the first thing that we want to look at is your map. So you have a mini map up top. If you click at the top right corner of it, it'll pull up a large map. And this is going to show you whatever particular area you're in. So this is the beta quadrant. If you were in the alpha quadrant, it would show you an image of that. And we can kind of look at that, the, the whole universe here. This isn't interactive. This is just a picture of it. Um, the rest of this will become self-explanatory once you get to these places, but you just need to know this is how you access it. If you were on ground, then we would see the ground map that you're on, and then you could further go out by clicking the galaxy map. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to show you where your next objective is. So on this particular character, he's already finished the tutorial and done a couple things. Um, but if you had just finished the tutorial, you would see this round circle and it would be around the soul system here, which is where you'd want to head. The easiest way is going to be just to click on it, hit OK, and your ship will start to navigate there. If we look under the mini map, this is going to show you what your current quest or mission is. You can also click on this button here and you can say transwarp. Uh, I think it'll let you do that at any level now, or you can auto navigate, which is what we just did a moment ago. Let's go ahead and try the transwarp to see. Okay, so this will basically jump you to the starting point of your next objective, mission, quest, whatever we want to call it here. So boom, we are now where this starts. Uh, one other kind of side note, I personally don't like having this um, this grid. You can dis uh, disable that with this button down here, and it just looks a little nicer and cleaner. All right, so that is how we identify where you need to go and how to get there. Now, let's say you find yourself in a position where you finished a mission or you've come out of the tutorial. This can happen sometimes, and there's nothing here. Okay, there's no marker on the map for where to go and what you need to do. So the next most important thing is going to be to click on our open mission journal button, and that's going to be towards the bottom left side of your minimap HUD here. So if we click on that, we're going to have a overview page. This talks about events that are happening and different things like that. Your events tab. Again, you want to ignore all that for now and click on your missions tab. This is going to show you basically all of your quests. Now, once you finish the tutorial, some um, different factions or uh, characters like, for instance, the uh, Discovery character, if you picked one of those, the tutorial is going to have kind of a, a, a story arc that you're going to go through and it drops you out. Some of them are, are longer than others. Once you complete that, everything will be unlocked to you for the most part. So you can kind of skip forward if you want to. If you're brand new, I would not recommend doing that. What you're going to want to do is go to the one at the very top, so the Klingon War and you are going to hail your next mission and we'll accept that and now that has come up here diplomatic orders so we can auto navigate or we can trans warp to the start of that mission you can skip through a lot of these missions um, so you can skip ahead you'll see there's a skip button it'll unlock there are a couple at the beginning of some of these arcs where you have to uh, complete this first one like welcome to earth space dock this one you cannot skip you're going to earth space dock this is the first one after you finish the tutorial you talk to admiral quinn and then that'll unlock the rest and you can skip through it if you want to. Again, if you're a new player, I'd highly recommend just playing through these. So let's say you get all the way done and you finished all of these. Your next is going to be the very next tab here, Romulan Mystery. And you would come in here, click on Hail, and you would want to go ahead and accept that. So it will start to bulk these up since I didn't complete diplomatic orders. Um, 
it is still listed here in my my uh, my to do list, quote unquote. So we can auto navigate or trans warp to any of these mission starting points. Or if you want some more details, or maybe you know I don't want to play this one here, um, or we'll say diplomatic orders. You can click on this little box to the left of it. And that will bring up the information about the mission itself. It'll also show you anything else you have slotted. It'll show you the rewards and you can drop the mission here if you want to. So that is where you manage your current slotted mission slash quests and how you also pick them up. So an easy way to jump to that, let's say there's you have too many things slotted and you can't see it all. You can go ahead and click on your mission journal. Episodes is where you would pick new ones, or if you want to ma manage what's currently in progress, you can click on the in progress tab and you can manage what's currently here. We only have two, so we can see them both here as well. All right, so that is how we navigate around the universe. That is how we find what mission we need to be doing or we want to be doing and how to manage which ones of those is slotted and how to navigate to those. Now, once you complete a mission, you will see it still labeled up here. And instead of having this round kind of clock looking like thing, it'll be a little bit of a squared kind of icon. You will click on that and it'll pull up a similar screen to this here, but it'll allow you to pick one of these rewards. In some instances, you'll get all of these rewards and you'll be able to choose one of these. That should auto pick up or, or pop up after you complete that quest. If it doesn't, then you can just click on the icon that'll be right here on the right and that'll pull up that ending screen where you can pick your reward and complete the mission and clear it out of your in progress tab. Star Trek Online has basically three different layers to the uh, the universe here. So what we're currently in is called sector space. It's large. You have all your different uh, sectors and then star systems uh, within that and can navigate to different areas uh, within the sector space. From there, what we have is system space. And that would be the next layer down. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we're at the soul system. We're going to go ahead and enter the soul system. So I'm calling it system space. I don't know if it's actually called something different, but if someone says, hey, I'm in soul system, that means they're in this second layer of it. So we have sector space, which is the largest area to move around. And then we're going to have the system space, which is going to be your individual maps that are spread out all over the universe or galaxy here. And so you can see here's our space dock. Uh, we have Earth down here and we have a whole ton of people in this social zone as well. All of these zones are our social zones, sector space and system space uh, where you can you know, see other players, talk to them, interact if you would like to. Now, next, what we have is ground. Now, ground could be on a station or it could be down on a planet. In this particular system, we can beam on to Earth Space Dock or down to Starfleet Academy on Earth as well. Both are what we would consider a ground map. So anything where you are standing on your feet and can see your character. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the station so we can take a look at that. So this would be the basically the, the lowest level of those three different layers. So we have starting at the bottom ground system and sector space. So if I'm here and it's telling me I need to go to Drozana station, I would beam up. I would be in system space. Um, that's uh, right around Earth. I would then go up to sector space and then I would navigate over to Drozana station. I would then enter that sector. I would see Drozana station, approach it, and then beam on board to it. So those are the different layers of the maps in Star Trek Online. Let's quickly familiarize ourselves with Earth Space Dock. You will spend a lot of time here. This is one of the larger social hubs and has all the different uh, utilities and things that you'll need to progress through the game. Um, so from the transporter pad, we ran down, we hung a left, and down here we have the shipyard. Um, you can buy equipment at this NPC. I wouldn't really waste time with that. I would just pick up and use drops that you have until you get into crafting and those kinds of things. Here's where you can switch between different ships Every level, uh, every uh, 10 levels, you will get a, a ship token and you will be able to spend that here at the ship vendor. Um, so you'll click on, I want to get a new starship and you will filter these by the kind of ship, um, your rank, those kinds of things. So uh, next one for me, I think will be Lieutenant. I don't have one of these tokens currently, but I would go through and find the ship that I want and I could purchase it through here with the, the free one. There's three of them you can pick from 
or you can purchase them with dilithium and things like that. At, at a lower level, I wouldn't waste time with that. Just grab one of the free ships that they're going to give you uh, as you level up and use that. If you want to change how your ship looks, the ship tailor is here and we'll just click into it real quick so you can just see what's going on. Um, so here's the ship I'm currently in. There are pre um, built uh, designs here, or you can click on advanced and you can customize these designs and kit bash them however you would like. There are mail and bank access all over the place. So over here on this side where this person standing, there is bank access. Over here, there is mail access on the other side. You'll find those kind of consoles all over the place. So back where Avril Quinn is behind um, this waterfall, his office is on the other side. We'll just go ahead and run over here real quick. This is where you will find Admiral Quinn. This is where you would go right after the tutorial. It would tell you to go to Earth Space Dock and come in here and talk with him. Again, you will see consoles for bank and for mail on either side. Um, I'll just show down here real quick because I don't want to get too deep into the weeds here. But down here, you can pick up bridge officer training manuals and bridge officers. If you want to pick up additional ones, you will get bridge officers as you level through the storyline. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But this guy down here, it's good to know where he is. You can pick up training manuals for that. Um, I do have a pretty extensive beginner's guide for all of these individual subjects. And I will go ahead and link that playlist down in the description. So if there's something specific, you know, that I mention here where you're like, I need to know a little bit more about that because that's where I am. Take a look at that beginner's guide playlist and it will uh, explain those individual things to you. So next place of importance here for Earth Space Dock is going to be on the far side. So again, we beamed in over here and we would then come straight across over to the exchange area. So the exchange area is going to also have bank access, mail access, and then access to the player exchange or auction house or whatever you would want to call it. They call it the exchange here. So we have mail on this side. And then these consoles, even though they're not lit up, if you get close to it, it is bank access here that you can click on. If we come across any of these consoles here will allow you to access the exchange and just quickly on here, if you want to sell something out of your inventory, you would drag it from your inventory here. I got a bunch of crap in mine because I use this character as a storage character. You would drag it in, put a price in, and you could sell it. Um, and then anything you want to buy, you can filter it out. You're going to need to kind of know what you're looking for because there's just a ton of stuff. If you happen to have one of something, like say one of these phaser beams, and you want to buy more of that exact one, you can drag that into the description. You want to make sure that you're either on all or that you're on ship equipment and ship weapons. Same thing's going to be true with anything else if we're looking at warp cores or whatever. I generally am going to get rid of the modifiers here and the um, the level of it just so it gives me a little bit better in terms of the results. And you'll see a whole bunch of these weapons. So if you're looking to pick up matching ones, again, at a lower level, that's probably not going to be as big of a deal. Um, but just so you know, that's where it is. All right, so that wraps up the basics of Earth Space Stock. You can kind of look around yourself here and approach the different NPCs. There is the tailor over in this area, this room here, if you want to change the way your outfit looks. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to just some basics here. So you'll notice my rows here look a little different from yours. The action bar, mine has two. If you want to adjust that, all you have to do is there's some buttons down here on the bottom. The middle one is going to let you select one, two, or three of them. If you uh, click on the top button here, which I just did, it will pull up all your different abilities. So as you level, you are going to pick up different captain's abilities. Um, I'm a tactical captain, so this one here, um, tactical optics. This is something specific to a tactical officer. If you were an engineer or science, you would have other ones. And as you progress and level, you will pick up more and more of these. If you were to slot kit modules or kits or weapons or any of those kinds of things, those will also, if they're activatable, will end up being listed here. So let's look at how that ties in. So if we look at our character screen, and we can do that by hitting you or the top right button just under your map button, that'll pull up your character screen here. So what we have at the top is kit modules. These basically are going to add different clickable abilities that are either castable or they're defensive or they are going to give you some sort of a buff. So there's a whole huge amount of variety here. There's universal ones and there's ones that are tied specifically to class. And uh, you'll pick some of these up free as you go through. You can buy them from the exchange. You can craft them. There's a whole bunch of different ways to go about doing that. 
Uh, next we have is the kit, and this is basically going to give you some base stats that are going to affect either you know your armor, your shield, your weapon, your your health hit points, or they're going to boost your cooldown times or effectiveness of your kit modules. Uh, next we have armor, and then we also have a slot for EV suits for when that's necessary. You have your ground shield, and then you'll be able to slot two different weapons that you can toggle between. So you can see I have two uh, that are slotted, and I can toggle between them here by hitting this little half circle button, and that'll switch between the two weapons. Lastly, we have devices. So I have hypo sprays here. You can also put shield generators and a whole host of other different things. Again, that's just a real kind of basic overview of the loadout for your character and how to adjust the basic UI here for your ground character. Why don't we go ahead and beam up to space and take a look at how we make those adjustments for the ship. And before we beam up, we should probably just state how you beam up. If you're on ground, on the left side of your map, top left corner, you will see this beam to ship button. This button is gonna be on basically anytime you're on ground, unless you're on a specific map where you need to ask for permission, uh, you're not gonna run into that anywhere in the lower levels, so we won't even get into that now. So I'm gonna click beam to ship. All right, we are in space and uh, it's pretty busy up here. So we got quite a bit of stuff uh, happening around us here. So let's just zoom in. And uh, this right here is a part of uh, a mission that I have slotted. So I can either drop that to get this out of the way for my video, but this gives us a good opportunity to talk about something else. And that's how to adjust your UI. Um, so the easiest way is just to hit F12 and you can grab the different um, uh, button slots, your trays, any of those kinds of things and move them around or you can hide them uh, for, for some of them here. So we just move that off to the side. Now it's kind of out of the way of my shot. Or if you know you wanted it all the way over, you could do that. You can rearrange by hitting F12 and then just dragging stuff around. Alternatively, you could click on the cog wheel here, game menu, and then you could click on uh, rearrange HUD and that will bring us to the same interface there. Uh, so similarly to ground, you also have your bars here. You can have quite a few more bars than what you would have on ground, maximum of three on ground and on space, it's gonna be a maximum of 10 of them. I normally block them in blocks of five and uh, we'll just take a quick look on how to do that. And so we can see how, you know, we have all the numbers like before. So if I wanted five, I'd click on five. Now, if you wanted 10, that would go up into the screen, um, you know, and kind of block some of your view and might not be real fun. So a little trick for that I like to use is I click on uh, the F12 and then I hit new and that's going to give me another one of these boxes. Okay. Now that's kind of in a weird funky spot, right? So if I go ahead and I click on quantity for the rows, there is a toggle here to rotate that tray and I can then turn it in that direction. Once you do that, it kind of gets all weird again, hit F12 and then you can move the stuff around. I can also then, you know, click on this tray and say, I want to see another five of them here. Um, you'll see some of them are, are repeating and you can, you know, click on these up and down arrows to change, you know, what number you want on that. Um, same thing in terms of slotting different abilities. I don't have much on this particular ship because it's just a starter ship. But again, you would see up here and you'd select and say, I want it right down here. And I could use evasive maneuvers there. Very important. And this is also important for ground. Make sure you lock your tray when you're done. You do that by just clicking on lock tray. And now you won't have to worry about in the middle of combat, clicking on evasive maneuvers and maybe dragging it off your bar or something like that. It is pretty annoying. Um, so that is how we adjust our bars, how we add more of them, and how we put abilities on the bar. Now let's do just a quick overview on the ship and the gear. Um, there's extensive videos on you know ship building and all those kinds of things, but let's just talk about the super, super basics in terms of just getting things on and off your ship, saving loadouts and that kind of thing. Um, so I have some real basic phasers here. Let's say I completed a mission and I picked up a you know, Mark II that I wanted to use. Um, I could click on this and it's gonna show me anything in my inventory uh, that can be slotted in this position for my particular rank. Um, I do have some things in the inventory that are much higher marks but are not slottable for a rank seven player. So all I would have to do is just click on that and select it and now it is there slotted on the ship. Um, you can also go into your inventory and say, I wanted to use this Mark II 
over this basic deflector. I can just drag and drop it there as well, and it's going to just replace it. In the instance where I clicked on it and selected the item, it did the same thing. It replaced it and it dropped it uh, right here. So anytime that you either click it or drag and drop, it's basically doing the exact same thing. And that's going to be the same for all of your items on the ship. Now, each of the three bottom ones here, your engineering, science, and tactical, unless you have universal consoles that are something you want to use, universal consoles can be slotted on any of your equipment slots. Otherwise, you're going to need to use a tactical console in the tactical slot. You're going to need to use a science console in the science slot and so on. Engineering console in the engineering slots. So you can see how that makes sense. Devices, again, similar to ground, um, you have, you know, shield batteries, weapons batteries. There's a whole bunch of better versions of these and different things that can be slotted here as well as you progress through the game. But now you know what they are, where they are, and how to slot those. Your basic ship stats are going to be here. Again, this is not really going to matter at all until you start to really level up and build out, you know, more of in-game um, ships and builds. Lastly, for the build side or you know putting together what you have on there and want to save it, there is a loadout system. So if you're on your ship tab and you click on loadouts, you can click save to loadout and you can create one. You can call it whatever you want. I'm real boring. So mine's normally one, two and three or four. If you buy extra slots, you get two of them for free built in on every ship. And now this is saved to this particular slot. And does say there's some unsaved changes, so let's resave it. So to save it again, I would click on save two, and instead of new, I would click on one. Now it says there's no unsaved changes. Let's say that you know I I pulled something off the ship, and or maybe I was on a different ship, or whatever it may be. You slot something to it by accident you didn't really want there. Um, so I'm missing my tactical. I can just go ahead and click on this loadout, loadout number one, and it will automatically reslot that. These things disappeared that were here because they weren't actually slotted. It was from a loadout before, so don't pay any attention to that. Um, all right, uh, what else we need to cover for space? The only other thing I'd recommend, especially for new players, when you start off, your power settings are going to be set look look like this, and they're basically set on a balance. I would highly, highly recommend changing this to three. So you'll see there's three little boxes and a diagonal on this button here. I would click on that and click on number three. This is going to give you a better visual of where your power settings are. I would highly recommend starting off with just taking your weapons power, cranking that all the way up and then locking it. And then you can decide whatever it is you want to do after that in terms of putting the rest maybe into shields. I personally like to go engines and weapons is what I like to do. But by taking this up, you're basically going to be doing twice the amount of damage. I mean, you just have more energy going into your weapons and they're going to be much, much more effective by cranking that up. Whatever else you want to do over here, boosting your shield, your auxiliary or whatever it may be, that's up to you. But I'm telling you right now, boost the weapons all the way up. Um, it'll make life uh, not just funner, but are easier, but a lot funner when you're playing through the game. Uh, lastly, let's just take a quick look at uh, bridge officers and how that uh, works. Again, I have some very in-depth guides on these individual subjects. We just want to make sure that you're aware of the very, very basics so you know what questions to be asking as you're moving through. So in the, uh, the, the character screen here, and this is actually the same window that we had on ground. It's just by default, it'll show you your ship if you're in space or if you're on ground, it's going to open it and show you your, your character. Um, but all of these things are, are visible regardless of where you are. One other tip is to make sure when you're working on your ship and what you're putting on it, do that while you're in space and save it while you're in space. If you do this on ground, you'll find things do not save properly. And that's true for your ground character as well. If you had picked up a new kit module or some new gear, make sure you're on ground when you're dropping those in. Also, just to clarify in case you're asking, there is not a loadout save for your ground. Um, it should just save with whatever you left on there. Again, I would just recommend making those adjustments while you're on a ground map. In this same window here, we also have a few other tabs. We have our skill tree. You'll select skills as you unlock them, leveling up. You can put those wherever you want to to start with. Again, I have guides specifically on how you can build out these skill trees depending on what you're wanting to do. There is also one for ground, um, and you can build these out how you want to. And again, there's guides for that. 
Next, we have traits. These traits are going to be for uh, space and ground, both in this window. You have starship traits that unlock with tier six premium ships that you either get from uh, events or purchasing from the cash shop. To start with on the low level, you're just basically going to be focused on your personal ground and personal space traits. These will open up more slots as you progress through the different levels, and you will have a bunch of just stock ones that are available to you. They will vary a little bit depending on what class you're on. Read through them, see what sounds fun or looks effective for you, slot those. Again, there's guides everywhere for this kind of stuff that uh, we can help you out with um, in, in a more specific uh, way, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, next, we have stations, and this is going to be your different bridge officers. I can see all my bridge officers here, and we could look at you know their individual stats and what they're trained for. The... Um, when you're in the bridge office or the station slot, this is going to determine right now we have high yield. That's all my two officers are trained for. So I can't actually do anything else with that. Can I? Yep. That's all they have. So if, let's say that this character here had also beam overload tra uh, trained in the ensign slot. When I click on this, it would show me over here. Okay. I have high yield and it would also have beam overload listed here. And if I wanted to change it, I would just click on it. I don't think I've trained any of these bridge officers in anything else, but if you wanted to train or change these abilities and they were trained on your bridge officer, here is where you would change that. And then they would probably pop up in either the spot that this was in or in some random place. And you would want to go ahead and click on this window again, unlock the tray and drag that ability to wherever you wanted on the bar. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, we moved through this pretty quick, and I know you're sitting here saying I have a lot of questions, and this video probably uh, inspired more questions than it answered. Um, and again, there is a this game is extremely complex. There is a lot of stuff involved, which is what makes it so fun. Um, but there's some very, very basic things in the game that it just doesn't explain very well, and that's what I wanted to uh, talk about here today. Just the very, very basics. Uh, check out the Beginner's Guide playlist for any of the specific stuff. I would recommend starting with these two videos, Basic Ship Building and Ground Build 101. And that'll help you get off to a good start along with this video here. All right, guys, until next time, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Hustle out, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Through the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way. Uh, or the highway.